talked to Jonathan. I said, how much time do I have? He said, 10 minutes. So there's a, and, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll steal more. We have a slide changer. Um, so I'm a, he'll have to hook me because it's going to be more than 10 minutes, so bear with me. Okay, Chuck Lewis. Um, right now I'm serving on the uh, Tree Farm Committee, Executive Committee, and the role is past chairman. Mr. Aben here is uh, the vice chairman, and a fellow named Craig Highfield is our current chairman. Craig is with uh, uh, Chesapeake, uh, Lions for Chesapeake. Uh, so there's a little uh, tree farm poster up there, the display we have. You'll see Rick's picture and his granddaughter. So Rick will be signing autographs later. So I want to talk to you about tree farm, talk to you about my experience as a Maryland woodland steward, and then uh, what I really want to talk about is what's going on in my place. Okay, tree farm. You've probably seen the signs over the years. Uh, been around a long time, back in the 40s. Um, recognize and promote forestry on private woodlands and as we all know that's where the, the ownership is in the private woodland. I used to when I was growing up I used to think that sign meant uh, Christmas trees but I've, I've learned now that it's more than that. Um, so this is the national program that funnels down to state implementation programs. So nationally 24 million acres in this program and in Maryland 132,000. So Maryland's been there from the beginning. So there was a change in 2000 that recognized that the emphasis was not just timber production and, and sale of your lumber, but it was more broadly defined as sustainability. Um, <clears throat> and I, in my opinion, and, and I think I'm correct, uh, a lot of this was driven by the European Union looking for certified sustainable lumber. And so there was an international market that kind of drove a standard setting basis. And so Tree Farm is part of an international organization. Uh, this is the governing body uh, out of Geneva, Switzerland. So they set and it flows down a series of sustainability standards which I'll talk about. So it's a formalized program. There's third party auditors that come in and, but it's administered at the local level. So if you become part of the program, there's a, either a DNR forester or a professional forester that works with you on your property. But then the state program that I uh, was the chairman of, that gets audited itself. So Price Waterhouse comes in every so many years, walks it down, does representative sampling of tree farms around the state, and then recertifies the Maryland program uh, applicable with the the international standard. Sustainability. The, there's eight standards and, and I have a more detailed book you can look at if you want to, but it's it's just good practice. If you have a management plan, either developed by uh, your DNR service for your stewardship plan or by your professional uh, forester and you're following that, you'll meet these standards. This is just a way to gauge yourself and to learn more information about how to best implement them. Obey the law. Reforestation, continuing the active management. Best management practice, water quality. So there's kind of four key elements you'll see on the sign. Wood, uh, recreation, wildlife, water quality. So it's a, a comprehensive management system to manage your woodland. Special sites, uh, some of our tree farms have Archaeological sites, whether it's Civil War or Native American sites, uh, family uh, cemeteries, and so that becomes part of your plan to holistically manage the property and then follow your plan. So to become a tree farmer, uh, the minimum criteria is 10 acres or more, uh, pretty much 10 to 10,000 acres, and there literally are tree farms out west or in the south uh, that are thousands of acres. If you start getting more than 10,000 acres, you're in a whole other world of, uh, of management. So you start with the management plan or the steward, stewardship plan. DNR is a, we're very lucky in the state of Maryland with our tree farm program. DNR is a tremendous sponsor. They provide many of the inspectors. They help us administer the program. Uh, it's not the same in all states, but 
here at DNR is an active, active player. So the stewardship plan is a key, key element. And so whether you end up co coming out of here saying, yeah, I want to be a tree farmer or not, I think we all know the value of having a plan, you know, understanding those goals and objectives. We had a question a few years ago. Somebody said, uh, well, if I become a tree farmer, do I have to harvest timber? And we looked at each other and went, well, no, you really don't. I mean, if, if your goal is recreation or water quality, that you can do that. You don't have to harvest timber. Now, a forester will tell you that it's a good, healthy practice for the woods to harvest, and, and you might want to reduce your densities and things like that, but it's not a requirement. Um, and that's kind of changed in the sign, too. It used to be called tree farm. Well, somewhere along the way, farm got to be a bad word, and so now it's a certified family forest. Which, which, you know, reaches a different audiences. Um, you know, I was kind of objecting to that, like, you know, kind of like being a farmer. But uh, uh, there, there are, it is a broader umbrella. Uh, people have different objectives. I went to a course once and the people put up pictures of their schnauzers and they said, we manage our woodland for schnauzer habitat. Because <laughs> what they like to do is go walk in the woods with their dogs. So that's, that was in their management plan, now's their habitat. So I think there's several benefits, you know, what's in it for me is kind of the question. And like everything, it's what you put into it, it's what you get out of it, but um, there's a wealth of resources to help you think both nationally and globally about your land and then how to implement those practices uh, locally. I have some brochures if you're interested in what it has all this, uh, the website's linked on it, which you can certainly have. Certification, so through a series of inspections and documentation, you can become a certified tree farm. You don't have to start there. You can, you can enter the program under what's called a pioneer status, take some time, develop, develop your land to meet the standards, you know, get some help uh, from your uh, consulting forester and then become certified. Um, the, the goal, and I don't know if we'll ever see it in, in my lifetime, but the goal is that there would actually be a premium paid for the timber that came out of sustainably managed forest. Um, it's starting to show up a little bit in the pulpwood industry, um, but it just means that, you know, when you go to Lowe's and you look for a stamp on that 2 by 4 that says this came from sustainably certified forest. So hopefully we'll get there. Recognition. There's our friend Rick again, who's been the tree farmer of the year and some other things. So, with 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 <laughs> Kathy got up to applaud. No. Uh, and there's Kathy, who, who makes Rick do all the work. Now Rick was telling me Kathy just spent the week on the bush hog. Uh, yeah. If you get into tree farm, there's a, a GPS GIS software program where you can go in and play with your property and try different planting techniques like what if I did roads here or what if I did uh, wildflowers here and those kind of things. So it's kind of a fun tool. Great magazine, keeps you informed what's going on. Policy. Um, we've had a few times that the national program has asked to write a, you know, have a letter written. I'm personally kind of following the current farm bill because uh, the markup coming out of the house significantly reduces the funding that's going to be provided for EQIP and uh, conservation stewardship programs. So, um, so those are the kind of things that I pay attention to, and, and by being part of uh, Tree Farm, it helps me understand that. Professional inspectors, they, I mean, they're helping you. Uh, it's not pass fail. Somebody's you know going to go to jail because you're uh, you know you didn't get your plan done. But it's a great resource, and again, DNR. Is there the network um, met great people we have we do, do uh, tours from time to time it's difficult to find the right property that can accommodate a lots of cars coming and, and it's a pretty intense effort but we try to you know keep that going you don't want to keep imposing upon the same people all the time then you have wonderful people like the groves that, that always open their door to you so you know, act local, think global. That's uh, a relatively recent photo of the uh, Tree Farm Committee. Oh, our newest member, excuse me, Dave. There he is. 
our, uh, our Western uh, Regional Representative now on the Tree Farm Committee. So, I mean, look at the demographics. The tree farmers look like 60-year-old white guys who, uh, you know, are retired and having fun on their land. Well, that, that's a lot of it. And, and so the, the membership is kind of flat. And so we need some energy and we need people who can help us reach, you know, the next generation of tree farmers. So here's some of the committee activities, as I said, administer the program and interface with the national program. Meet a few times a year. Arbor Day seedling distribution is something the committee's been doing for years. So we take a red bud seedling and put a little note on there telling all of the legislators how valuable the timber industry is to them. And we go down to Annapolis and we put one on everybody's desk and uh, spend some time down there. Also recognize the tree farmer of the year. Usually their local delegate will gonna come up and uh, introduce them to the, to the um, House and the Senate in Annapolis. So it's been very successful and it's a great way for us to communicate to our legislatures the value of, of uh, Maryland uh, woodlands. There's national leadership conferences. We sponsor things, workshop educational events such as woodland stewards. Uh, uh, different workshops that forestry boards put on. And we sponsor a scholarship at Allegheny College for uh, a forestry technician. Okay, so that's tree farm. I, I got more, wait a minute, you're not done yet, I'm sorry. All right, so, so now my turn to talk about me. Uh, so Carroll County, back 40 acres, um, for years I attended uh, forestry workshops that uh, in, in Frederick County, Jonathan was there. Uh, you know, I, I got interested first on the tax benefit for the property that piqued my interest and then it led to more. So I became a tree farmer in 98. I came to Woodland Stewards in 2013 and it really energized me to get much more involved. Um, so I had my cohort and then we did a service project. We did. Uh, 4-H fair educational demonstration and gave out seedlings and one of the members created this uh, wheel of forestry you know, like the wheel you spend to get the number and people pick a number to win we give them a prize ask them a question oh, we had a lot of fun with it so that was our outreach project um, so now I'm putting into practice so done timber sales three years ago I put in a, a pollinator meadow um, did some rope trail work that spring I put in uh, oak trees, reforestation after harvest, and I've been working on invasives and I'm swimming against the tide, but I'm still still alive. <laughs> so out of the stewardship plan, um, so the property is in the corners of pointer in here. Okay, so that's out of the stewardship plan, the house is in the corner, uh, that shape there is the uh, reforestation hay field in the back which is now a meadow so oak hickory uh, poplar stand riparian so that was in july four acres and the photo doesn't do it justice it was just gorgeous very pleased that's the pollinator meadow that was uh nrcs equip program uh, this is stilt grass that was got up to my waist. I knew I was going to have a timber sale, so I went in there and aggressively sprayed everything, cleaned it up because I didn't want those uh, skitters dragging uh, stilt grass all around, and that's what I created. <laughs> so then I had to go back and do a lot of road work. So mm -hmm. unintended consequence. Uh, recently, I got a five-year conservation stewardship plan, so I'm going to do some uh, wildlife habitat and woodland meadow edge, uh, thin a poplar stand, and then. Uh, there's an overall set of best management practices called the forest bundle, and I've got specific on that, but it's, you know, maintain so many snags per acre, uh, take care of the quality of the soil, uh, but not onerous, and uh, should be able to do it. Uh, crop tree release, several different practices. So that's the edge that I'll be planting. I just had that mowed so that it actually cleaned up into the woods about another 35 or 40 feet. So service berry, spice berry, persimmons, common apple. And that's my grandson heading in the future. And that's about it, so real quick. <laughs>